Hi, good morning. Uh, I'm really happy to be here, or at least I should say being back here, because it was 15 years ago when I studied physics here in this uh, same university. So, enough about me. This is my daughter Tove, my oldest daughter, nine years old, and she's rehearsing for a musical. So each weekend I get to spend a number of hours to drive her to the venue. And during these very interesting daughter to dad talks, she last week asked me, Dad, what do you do for work? And I explained her, because first I need to say, I was thinking that parents were worried about what their children were doing, but apparently it's also the other way around. But coming back to her question, I explained to her that my work is about making sure that when she has my age, that she will live in a world which is as good as it is today, or preferably even a lot better. And she looked at me and she said, Dad, what is wrong with the world today? Because, yeah, I have a great family, a cool dad, I've got uh, best friends forever, all these nice things, so what, what is there so wrong about it? And I said, okay, our generations, as well as the previous ones, they create a lot of problems. Problems which we need to solve rather than leaving up to our children to solve. And two of these problems are, on one hand, the amount of waste which we produce, and secondly, the scarcity of resources. Resources, materials, as well as energy. So, first challenge. First challenge, the enormous amount of waste which we produce. In Europe, in the landfills, there is more than 5,000 million tons of waste landfilled. This is an incredible amount of waste. In order to explain this, it's possible to cover with this waste the greater cities of Paris, London, Madrid and Brussels with a waste layer of one meter thick. It would also provide enough energy for the entire population of Belgium to drive around the world with their car. Let's not do this because it's not sustainable, but clearly demonstrate the enormous potential. So, that's about the enormous amount of waste we produce, but what is even worse is that day in, day out, we ship waste to Africa, where children deassemble it to recover metals and to generate an income, but in very unhealthy conditions. So this clearly needs to stop. We need to make sure that when we are fine with producing products, we also take care of making sure that the residues don't end up somewhere else. So, first challenge, waste. Second challenge, resources. There's a serious scarcity of resources, as well as metals, materials, as well as energy. And you see this by demonstrated by the following infographic. And this infographic shows that when my daughter is my age, she will nearly have no materials anymore to make smartphones, which is very threatening for her at this moment. So, a lot of scarcity on materials as well as energy, but what is even worse when living in Europe is that these resources are mainly situated outside of Europe. So as a European, we have even greater challenges than the rest of the world. So, where is the unexpected connection? The unexpected connection lies in the fact that we can transform landfills containing all this waste into the energy and materials mines of the future. And how can we do this? by closing the loops, as part of a transition from a linear to a circular, low-carbon economy. And how do we see this? Okay, our society starts from primary ores, primary resources, and we create products out of that. So, creating these products also creates residues, but at the end, when we consume and use these products, we always also have residues. So, in most cases, a lot of these residues and waste, especially in the past, ended up in landfills. So, how can we now close the loop? Closing the loop can be done in three different ways. The first way is about recycling during the production process. Secondly, when we have used all these products, we can also recover materials and energy from it. And that's what we call urban mining. Thirdly, and lastly, and this is what my talk is about, is about enhanced landfill mining. Enhanced landfill mining closes the loop and recovers the potential from all these landfills, 
giving back materials and energy to the society when we need it. Is this uh, science fiction? Clearly no, it's an uh, idea of uh, Louis Maquilles, chairman of the board of Group Maquilles, already back in 2005. But in the meantime, it's a concept close to reality. So, what's the definition of enhanced landfill mining? It's about making sure that we prepare, condition, explore landfills, that we mine them, so we actually take out the waste, and we separate it and we use innovative technologies to perform integrated materials as well as energy recuperation. And by doing this, we also want to respect all social as well as ecological criteria. So, how, how does it go into practice? Well, we start basically from a landfill containing all these materials and energy. We open them up and we mine them and separate them. So, we can immediately already recuperate a number of metals, plastics, other materials, a number of other separated waste streams, they need further treatment. They need these advanced upcycling technologies in order to recuperate a second batch of materials, as demonstrated over here. And then the residue from this action is what we call a high caloric waste fraction, a fraction of waste which has a lot of potential towards energy. And we want to recuperate the energy in the most efficient and effective way. And that's why we have chosen plasma gasification technologies. And how does that work? Okay, these plasma technology, they gasify the waste and they turn it into energy, like hydrogen, like methane, or liquid fuels. And what is even better is that this plasma technology generates energy in the most efficient way, but it does not create bottom ashes. Instead, it creates what we call plasma rock. Plasma rock, let's call it just a stone, basically, as you see it here, it can be upcycled, transformed, as we call it, into high added value building products, such as a replacement for cement or highly insulating building blocks. So, when we use all these very innovative technologies, we demonstrate that we make use in the best possible way of the potential. That means that we don't waste the waste, but that we close the circle. So, how far is this uh, concept now from reality? Well, we've done over the last past few years, we've done a lot of research. We invested a number of millions of dollars into it, and we demonstrated that we have all the solutions technically available to perform enhanced landfill mining. So, technology, check. What else do we need? We need permits, we need legislation, and we are very happy that OVAM, which is the public Flemish Waste Agency has adopted enhanced landfill mining in its policy, both from a landfill remediation point of view as well as a materials point of view. So, permits, legislation, check. What else do we need? Well, we also need an industrial consortium, a number of people putting together funding technologies in order to make everything right. So, we have technology, we have legislation permits, we have the funding and the technologies, what else do we need? Well, clearly, this is not enough. This is not a recipe for success. And this is the time where you've all been waiting for today. It's audience participation time. So I'd like to ask, who in the audience knows this person? Well, I'm quite happy with this reaction. I hope indeed a lot more people know these brothers. Indeed, indeed, thank you. The Orville and Wilbur Wright brothers. And clearly, let's show by this example why you know these two folks and you don't know the first guy. Because the first guy was Samuel Pierpoint Langley. He was a well-regarded guy studying at Harvard, receiving a 50K US dollar grant from the War Department. He had great lobby connections, everything which you could imagine. But clearly, you don't know him. So what happened a few hundred kilometers fr up front? Well, there, the brothers Orville, Wilbur Wright, in Dayton, Ohio, they, they collected a number of really passionate people around them, and clearly they were successful because on December 17, 1903, we witnessed them flying a fir an airplane for the first time. And clearly what has happened, because these two guys, 
hobbing around with a nice set of people, managed while a really great guy like Pierpont Langley couldn't. So what's the difference? Well, the difference is that the Orwell Wright brothers, they started from really why they were doing. They started from the idea, how can we make a change for the better? How can we make a contribution society so our future generations can benefit from it? So they really were able to inspire people around them to together implement this project and bring it to a good end. And clearly Samuel Pierpoint Langley was a great guy, but was caring more about getting rich and getting famous. Does it mean that for an offline for mining that we don't want money? Clearly we do, because we receive grants for the research, we will need incentives to make it a viable business model in the beginning. But clearly what is different is that we start from this same sustainable why. We also, as the Wright brothers, want to make a difference for our future generations to resolve the problems that we've created instead of passing them to our children. So, what is the potential of this enhanced land for mining? I want to demonstrate this by saying, indeed, enhanced land for mining has a really strong potential. There are, in Europe, up to a half a million landfills. This means that there's a really big potential. So it's basically able to create a blue ocean for enhanced land for mining. This means that we move away from traditional markets and we create an old, a completely new market where we don't compete head-to-head -head with low margins, but we create a new economy, a new industry based on a very sustainable business model. I'd like to demonstrate this with a, a well-known example. This is uh, the Cirque du Soleil. And as you all know, the circus was very popular a few um, years ago, or at least a few decades ago. But in the meantime, nearly nobody goes to circus anymore. But you all go, or at least a number of you do, you go to Cirque du Soleil. Why? Because they reinvented the circus. They updated, reinvented the circus to this today, and they made a very successful business model out of it. And clearly, there are nearly no other companies doing a similar thing. So, coming back to the Wright brothers, it's about, indeed, um, making sure that we are able to inspire people around us to jointly develop these sustainable projects. And how do we do it? We do it by adapting to what we call a quadruple helix model. Quadruple helix model means that you involve all kinds of people from the industry, from the governments, from research institutes, as well as civil social society actors. And together, you can develop the why, can develop this broad buy-in in order to make it a success. So, um, I would um, like to end the talk with uh, yeah, explaining a bit or collecting what we have learned today. Because, indeed, what have we learned today? We have learned, indeed, that closing the loop as part of the transition to a low-carbon circular economy is a key thing in order to address key challenges. Secondly, what we've learned is that enhanced central mining starts from a sustainable why, from a high ambition level, technically, economically, but also indeed has a real strong potential. And thirdly, I want you to believe in the same way as I believe in this probable helix model. By doing it together, making sure that together we can realize new projects and uh, solving problems. So I hope indeed within 20 years, 25 years from now, I can look up to my children and say, together with a number of people, we have created the problems which we generated, rather than leaving it up to you to solve. I thank you, and I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day.